guys, so Jane here from Legion Gaming. In this video, I have another Battlefield 5 leak. In this video, we're talking about sort of a DLC and setting leak that we recently got and sort of EA Play release date, that kind of stuff. But I am again joined by Cheesy Gaming and another YouTuber called Soplasky. Cheesy Gaming has recently exploded, so he has like 8, 8k subs now. And Soplasky is a pretty small YouTuber and he makes really great content. And I'd recommend that you check out both of their channels linked in the description and I just thank them for doing this video with me but let's get right into the discussion so yeah I guess it's just like a discussion um, we're just gonna be saying our opinions on some stuff that we have written down here so I, mean, I guess getting like a lot of people are talking about so we can't miss this yeah we no way we couldn't make a video about this so uh, I guess getting straight into it um, basically one of the first things is it'll be revealed at EA play I'm, this probably isn't too shocking, um, considering that's, like, you know, because EA Play seems, it's obviously by EA, so I wasn't really yeah. surprised by this, were you guys? I, well, I mean, like, it's like one of those things, like, people get so excited over, like, you know, Call of Duty, hey guys, we just got, it's got announced that, you know, they're gonna be showing some gameplay at, you know, E3, woo, big whoop, like, we, they do it every year, it's kinda like, okay, yeah, we knew that, so, you know, I, I, it's not really something big to go off of. Yeah, with this, I mean, like, once it got past GDC this year, where's when they, that's when they announced Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Yeah, I kind of just assumed that they were going to announce it at EA Play. And even if they weren't going to announce it, we kind of knew that we'd be, be getting gameplay at EA Play. I, but for me personally, I hope that they announce it a bit before that, and then we get our first, like, full multiplayer gameplay at EA Play. But if this leak is credible, it won't be announced until then and hardline wasn't actually because hardline was supposed to release in like november mm -hmm. but then it got delayed and it wasn't announced until e3 so yeah. if they followed hardline's path which was the last battlefield game this would make sense mm -hmm. but uh, let's get into the dlc leak so right. basically they had like a it looks like a postcard kind of or like an mm -hmm. invitation i guess to maybe a reveal of battlefield 5 eastern front which seems to be the first DLC coming in the game. And from this name, people may have thought this was World War II. I mean, I can uh, just tell by, like, the map. Yeah. That's what they sound like. I'm like, okay, they got Rebel, they got Soviet. It kind of feels like some kind of World War II. Like, I'm looking at the forum comments, and that's what some people are saying. I guess yeah. they don't really understand that it's not really what, you know, people are thinking that these names are called. Uh, yeah, and so what I was thinking, so it mentions the... Pan Asian Coalition, and I looked them up, and they are from uh, Battlefield Twenty One Forty. Is it Forty Two or Forty Three? Forty Two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're from. They're prim primarily from um, the future Battlefield universe, and so that got me thinking. And they were formed in Twenty Twenty, and the War of Twenty Twenty was featured in Battlefield Four, and so this kind of eliminates, at least if this is credible, this kind of eliminates the possibility of. World War Two, mm -hmm. and it mentions the Russians, and there was a Cold War in 2139 in the Battlefield universe, and I think that's probably my strongest bet to where the, where the setting is going to be, so like 2139, Russia, Cold War, Pan-Asian coalition, and like the US and stuff. So, I mean, like, it could be, so it could be going to like the near future, like not all the way there, just so they can make people happy, I'm guessing? Yeah, I like... With Eastern Front, I think it's more just about the location. Mm -hmm. But yeah, be based on this, um, and especially since they mentioned in two of the other DLCs, there's one called Titan Assault. No, yeah, there's just one of the DLCs. It's called Titan Assault, and they introduced a new game mode called Titan Conquest, which sounds a lot like 2142, but I don't think they'd go all the way there just simply because people don't necessarily want a full-on future game like yeah. 2143 people didn't want but they could kind of like move around that by just giving us a game around maybe 2100 mm -hmm. that's a bit futuristic but it's not all the way there quite yet but it also seems like with each dlc it seems like the dlcs have a story also like if it's, you read yeah, same. yeah and that could be interesting like i don't think they'd go for a full-on campaign but if they did go for a good campaign they could theoretically add in an extra campaign mission or two extra campaign missions with each DLC because the way they describe the DLCs it seems as if like 
they have a story to them. Yeah, it feels like some kind of series. Like, okay, now they're moving up to, you know, the new territory, whatever like that. It's like, it's kind of like, you know, it's like some show going on here. So, yeah, basically like a storyline, but multiplayer DLC-wise. Yeah, which is really, could be really cool if this I mean, it's something true. new. I don't, I never yeah. really heard of any other, you know, game, you know, doing that. So I think yeah. that'd be pretty unique for them. Okay, so uh, one thing, it also mentions the Frostbite 3 engine, which, you know, just like the Frostbite engine, which was used in Battlefield 4, so despite what I said in my last video about, like, they hired a new combat gameplay desire, uh, mm -hmm. designer over at DICE, however, if they're using the same engine, um, I don't really know, like, it must not be that innovative then if they're using the same engine, so... I guess that kind of disproves what I said in my last video, and they're, I guess, yeah, they're using the same engine that they're doing in Battlefield 4. Well, I mean, I made a video, um, my last video that I made on my channel was about the graphics, and I got some really guy, I got some really good guy who commented on my video who, you know, is in contact with a lot of these people that do this stuff, uh, you know, that works for, um, you know, the Frostbite and all that stuff, and he told me that, that basically Battlefront was, like, uh, was a Frostbite 3.5 basically engine. It's still Frostbite 3, but then he told me that they're not using the Frostbite 3 name anymore. It's just going to be called Frostbite instead of like Frostbite 4, Frostbite 3.5, whatever they're going to do with that. So I don't understand with that. Maybe he's right about that. I can understand that because they do say Frostbite 3 here. Maybe they're just going to stick with just Frostbite 3 and just stick with that, but that's what he told me. Yeah, like that. this is the Fallen Dragon, which is basically... Uh, the second assault DLC from Battlefield 4 is kind of where this does seem to fall apart. Like we were talking about this earlier, but they say Siege of Shanghai 2016, all these maps 2016. And they also said it's reimagined in the Frostbite 3 engine. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And there's yeah. also, like, this is just a very minor detail, but like, they, like, theoretically isn't, oh no, wait, is DICE, like, who's devout, is DICE Stockholm doing this or DICE LA? I think I think um, I'm pr I'm pretty sure it's like Stockholm. I don't know. I'm not, I'm yeah, not I don't. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is though. I think they start it. I think okay. they're going with it. In the leak below, like um, that shows the EA Play and EA Access show floor level. Yep. It doesn't show Battlefield Five. It just shows Battlefield Five Eastern Front. So I yeah. don't know if they mean yeah. for that to be the title of the game. Or, because that, that's just kind of confusing, because if they're just introducing Battlefield Five Eastern Front without the game, does that mean that they're going to announce the game before that? Yeah. Like... It doesn't... I mean, you don't really hear about a lot of DLC leaks anymore, because they don't... I mean, like, they're not already this too much in, you know, into the DLC, so, I mean, if you look at, like, the second picture, they do have, like, a standalone logo, just Battlefield Five, but they still have the same background, though. So, well, it does say, it just says change the background on the photo here, so I don't know what they do with that. But it just, it just doesn't, you know, fit in, I would say. Yeah. Like, and, like, oh, uh, yeah. No, continue, continue. So, like, it says that this guy, Nicholas Feg Fegreus, is going to be speaking, and he is actually a guy at Dice Stockholm. I don't know, I felt like whoever did, if this is a fake, then someone did obviously do their research on it. Uh, so yeah. I, well, I want I just want to point out something for people that might have missed it. This is really similar to Battlefield, f you know, Battlefield 4. It, almost exactly if you just look at it, you know, yeah. you got the Fallen Dragon which is, you know, all old maps are re um, you know, putting in and then if you look at like the fourth DLC which is kind of similar to like Naval Strike or so, just somewhere around there, it, you can just tell that it's, you know, it's going to be kind of like Naval you know, just naval strike, whatever. You can see a tiny assault. You got the tiny thing that we, you know, we had in there in Battlefield Four, and you got the map names Island. You got Fish Head, Operation Fish Head. So it's it's kind of sim. It's really similar in my opinion. Like I noticed this right away. Like I just looked at the names. I was like, wow, this feels like a Battlefield Four DLC. Like it doesn't, you know, feel new. I don't know if they would go for the same route, like the same DLC style. But you know, that's just one thing I want to point out that could just, you know, just pull this whole thing apart. Yeah, well, some of them are flipped around, like, um, Prototype Warfare would be more like Final Stand, and that's the third one, and like you said, Naval Strike was like the third DLC before, like, what was it, it was like Dragon, what was uh, the dra fourth? Dragon, dragon Valley? Oh, Dragon Valley, yeah. No, 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 the, so. <laughs> I no, it was like Dragon's Teeth, is yeah, that right? I'm pretty oh, sure yeah, Dragon's Teeth. Yeah, Dragon's Teeth, yeah, but then the right. last one seems to like, 
go completely different, just called like Independence Day, and it's all fought within the U.S., which is how so we really seen they're being that invaded. before. Yeah, I know, which is cool though. It would be interesting to see like uh, battles in Los Angeles and San Francisco. I think that'd be sick. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, like. Yeah. I think this does just still support the thing that this is kind of like a story DLC just carrying on. Like now it's so we're we must be losing then if they're gonna be if they're gonna be on you know our territory here yeah. you know Los Angeles and all that. Yeah, and I mean this could always lead back into the battlefield like twenty one forty two series because people thought that like Final Sand was a prelude to Battlefield twenty one. 42, but this seems to like take that even further and get closer. And I would actually be completely fine with this kind of game. I just personally didn't want another like modern military that was just like 2020 or around then. I hope they like push it a bit further uh, just so we can get different weapons. Because if they go like to 2100, they can basically just make up weapons at that point. Mm -hmm. and it just gives them a lot of freedom. Whereas if they stay around 2020, they can't really change up too much um, as far as, like, fiction goes and, like, the weapons and the technology. I mean, that's not, like, a big difference, like, you know, getting, like, you know, maybe, like, two, you know, 250 there. Maybe, like, 2000, you know, 50 would make more sense because, like, that's only, like, four years apart from now. So, I mean, how much could they really change? Like, they can't do something yeah. so drastic having some guy, you know, some giant, you know, helicopter you know, that's, you know, just, ho that hovers, like, okay, like, it does, well, helicopters do hover, but <laughs> that makes no sense, all right, but, uh, all right, we're already, we're already in that time period, so never mind, but you, you're getting what I'm saying, you can't have, yeah. um, you know, you know, we already have hovering tanks in, you know, the Final Stand DLC, but, you know, something like hovering bikes, or something like that, like guns that shoot, you know, lasers, you, you know, you can't really have that, and it's still, people could debate, just saying, well, is this kind of like a reskin, you know, to Battlefront? And that's why I also want to, you know, check up on here. What if this game is kind of similar to Battlefront with, like, the futuristic stuff? And then people question, you know, how come this game is almost like, you know, like, kind of like Star Wars, you got lasers, and how come this game is, you know, has more content than Battlefront? I mean, I think that's one thing that they could be, you know, just putting themselves into if they're going to do a futuristic kind of thing like that. So I don't know if they're going to go for that exact route because people are going to get, you know, critical. That's just how it's going to go. Yeah. But, I mean, to be fair, like, most Battlefield fans don't take Battlefront too seriously just because they're at launch there's only, like, nine weapons or something. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it more plays towards just the Casual. person who doesn't play first-person shooters and just wants to experience Star Wars. So, I mean, that was something earlier when people were talking about 2142. It's like, well, we already have Battlefront. And I was just thinking, well, not really. Like, it's not really a true Battlefield game. Like, there's just not nearly the content. It doesn't really have the military feel that Battlefield does. I mean, just look at the heroes. Like, they can, you can just get into them and go around and absolutely destroy everybody. <laughs> yeah. Like, they just don't take it too seriously, which is fine for that game. But I just don't find it's a full Battlefield game. I mean, yeah, but, like, oh, uh, yeah, continue. But like speaking of, like, serious and stuff, I was wondering how can they really make a realistic Battlefield that isn't, like, an arcade game with such a future futuristic uh, setting like would it really fulfill like the battlefield need if you have like guys floating with like jetpacks and stuff no, or something no, that yeah i know i don't i that's like i just don't think they're gonna put jetpacks in <laughs> just just because i mean theoretically we might have jetpacks then but i mean <laughs> just because every single time Somebody brings up a futuristic battlefield game. People are like, I don't want jetpacks in Battlefield. I mean, you got to think about this too. I mean, like the trailers. Trailers attract people. That's what gets people hyped. That's where you get the pre-orders. Imagine I had another conversation with this other guy that commented on my video, and he was talking about you know a whole trailer. He was basically detailing a trailer, you know, just in like a whole paragraph, which I thought was pretty cool and comparing it. And it's like, would you see a trailer? Okay, wow, cool, Battlefield Five. Uh, trailer just released you check you check it out you see some guy you know running with a jetpack with all this future stuff going on wow is that going to get you really hyped is that you know going to get you the chills or is a or is like a um a trailer 
or you see, you know, a um, World War II style, something really, really cinematic that's just going to get to your edge because this is, you know, this stuff actually happened and everyone wants a World War II game. You know, you can just see by a lot of polls, you know, by Jack Frax, you know, everyone wants to see a World War II game. I think it would get more people hype seeing on, the, you know, the Frostbite engine, just seeing a trailer World War II style with, you know, like Germans walking by and, you know, just something really epic tanks flying out and just, you know, just going at it. I think that would get more pre-orders than some, you know, Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, or Advanced Warfare type of stuff, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think they would go for that route, but it can always be possible. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. I, do you guys have any other, uh, have any other opinions? So, basically, to wrap up what we all just said, uh, the game will be set from either 2020 to 2140, and will feature the U.S. like defending themselves against the superior technology, like the techn technologically advanced Pan Asian Coalition. So, yeah, yeah well, th sorry, just I mean, as you're wrapping up, just as you said that, if they are more technologically advanced, that could like bring up like vehicle specific, like vehicles that are only specific to certain factions, which could also oh, yeah. be interesting, because if they have more technology, like for example, the U.S. might not have. Hover, like, well, they probably have hover tanks if it goes to 2100 or something, but they might not have all the technology that the Pan-Asian Coalition does, and it could be interesting to see how they would balance that out if one, like, side had specific vehicles, because it's not just weapons, because they can pretty much put, like, a similar weapon on either side, but if it's just based on pure technology, maybe the, the U.S. tanks have more power because they didn't sacrifice power for like being able to move faster but that could be an interesting realm that they could go you know, into. that kind of sounds like what you just said there kind of sounds like planet side too if you ever played that game you know yeah you have, that a couple times. yeah that that that's what i'm thinking of yeah but yeah i think yeah we should wrap this up yeah sorry i just had to say that when you said that about the superior technology Thanks for watching this guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, it took forever to put together. This is like an 18 minute video, ridiculously long, it took me forever to get the gameplay, so please drop a like down below, and if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. Also, something that contributed to it taking a while for me to get this gameplay was, one, the fact that I haven't been playing a lot, that's also why I haven't been uploading a lot. Two, when I do play, I don't really have the weapons I use. I went legendary, probably one of the stupidest decisions I've ever done, but I finally got my M16, as you can see at the end here. I went pretty ham with it in this last clip. You also saw some Bad Company 2 gameplay in this video. Um, I rarely play that game, but I was just feeling it, and I thought I might as well save some of the gameplay and put it in this video. Um, it's really hard to get back into, especially switching between PC and console, but uh, you may expect to see some more of that gameplay in the future. Also, the sniper video, taking a while, it takes a really long time, and it's going to be a great video, and you guys will love it, but it's taking a while. I mean, I said I, I, don't, I can't give a timeline on when I'm going to post it, um, ideally this weekend, but now, because I was traveling, it's on a separate computer, so I'm not 100% sure when that'll go up. But again, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out Soplasky and Cheesy Gaming linked below in the description. Subscribe if you are new to my channel and expect much more Battlefield content in the future. There's also another game called Days of War that I may be covering. It looks really interesting. It's a World War II shooter, but that's what it is for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.